Hello and welcome to the live streamer backstage podcast. I'm Alec Johnson and this is a weekly show where I interview fellow live streamers to understand how they are using live streaming as a tool in their business and to discover the gear and tech that they're using to produce great live shows. My guest today is James Hicks, an engineering technologist, creative entrepreneur, thought leader, content creator and advocate. I asked him on the show because I think there is a fascinating conversation to be had around the explosion of live streaming in recent years, largely driven by the technology in terms of the software, the hardware, the platforms that make it all so accessible to the masses. This, of course, coupled with the recent global pandemic that some of you may have been aware of. <laughs> and uh, this has all obviously forced uh, businesses to move sometimes their entire operations online. And uh, this is uh, no doubt also driven these technological advances. So I can think of no better person to have this conversation with than James, given his vast experience of working with and serving individuals and organizations, providing technology insights and consulting services through Hicks New Media. James is extremely well connected and certainly has his finger on the pulse of what is going on in the tech space. I'm really looking forward to this conversation. So without further ado, let's welcome Mr. James Hicks. Hey, James, thank you for being here. How are you doing today? Mr. Mr. Hold on, Mr. Alec Johnson. Let's, let's talk about that intro. Who, who is, man, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to record that myself and, and use that as a, kind of a, a sizzle reel for me. Man, I appreciate you for having me on your on your show live streamer backstage this is an honor oh thank you so much for for being here like i say i can think of no uh, better person to have this uh, conversation with and we both like to 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 geek out about these things i know <laughs> yes we do uh -huh. yes we do so uh, yeah i do want to get into the sort of the tech side of things and uh, uh and the platforms and the the gear and so on but uh, but first of all perhaps you can tell us a little bit more about uh sort of your origin story really you know how did you get into uh, the world of uh, live streaming and what what's brought you to this place Wow. Okay. So I'm glad you boiled it down to live streaming as opposed to just technology, right? Yeah. <laughs> that, that could, we could be here for hours talking about that. But I, I tell the story of if there was any blessing of the pandemic for me, it was the fact that it allowed me to really pause and really to lock in to, as my mantra for the year, focus. It allowed me to focus on what mattered to the community I was looking to serve. I doing a lot of blogging. I was in, I was in the work, I've been in the WordPress for decades. So I, I know that platform quite a bit. Well, I, I love to write that was serving me well. And that was serving my community. Well, I started dabbling in podcasting, audio podcasting quite a while ago as well. Didn't see the uh, attraction uh, as fast as I wanted to, to be honest with you, because it, it was such a, a splintered uh, field at, at a particular time when I, when I got in. But Again, the, the blessing of COVID allowing me to stop and pause and think and, and really focus and lock in, video allowed me to tell the stories and have others tell their stories and have that extra energy piece. As you see, I talk with my hands. Mm -hmm. I'm very, very dramatic and, and very emotional and things of like that. And you can't see that. Sure. If it's just text, mm -hmm. you can't see that. You can hear the intonations and the voice and things of that nature from an audio side. But man, when you throw video on, when you press record and when you turn lights on and you put a microphone in front of someone then you get the that full three-dimensional aspect of a conversation and you can really pivot and dialogue off of body language right you can see if i'm really engaged in particular statements that we're talking about so i really fell in love with that from the very beginning i've always been pretty decent at allowing folks to tell their stories so coming on my shows and allowing them to talk about what matters to them Always, uh, always, I love, always love to hear people say I, they don't have anything interesting to talk about. <laughs> Give me 15 minutes with you on, on a, on a show, right? And I'm sure we'll find something interesting that you have to talk about. So, so again, just really being able to, uh, lock in, do video, find the, the value and find the, the intention that folks are looking to share and, and have those conversations. That's really where I got into the video side a couple of years ago, again, when we were locked down, just because I saw that there was a need within my community to have more of those in-depth types of conversation so mm -hmm. and you make a point there about the, uh, the the podcasting i've always felt like i mean i'm, I'm a big listener of podcasts uh, but mm -hmm. i know that from the, uh, the the creator side you know you don't necessarily have that sort of connection one of the things that that i love just to sort of echo your point about uh, live streaming is the fact that you're getting instant feedback on a live stream you know more so even yes. the, the videos you get comments and things like that on videos that trickle in over time <laughs> uh, but when you're having a, a live stream and you can actually just have that sort of uh, 
that real in-depth conversation with uh, with yes. these people. It's uh, yeah, it's a, a different level, really. Um, perhaps love, you can give it, them- and, and you and you can and you can't you can't uh, you can't fake the the reactions, right? I mean, it. you you can't put up a veil and say this is not the true you or the true me. You're looking into my eyes right now, and you can tell that I'm completely 100% locked in and sincere about this conversation that we're uh-huh. having. And if I was just doing recording an audio podcast, I could I could be. Lay, laying in my bed or something, have, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Only giving you ten percent instead of this one hundred percent. I'm trying to give you one hundred percent today, Mr. Johnson. I'm uh-huh. trying to give it to you. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> um, perhaps you could just. I know we've just sort of focused on just the live streaming. Perhaps you could just give us a bit more about your uh, your sort of general tech background as well, though. Without, um, uh, yeah, I know this could be a whole another it's conversation. But yeah, I'd, I'd, no, it's, it's it's all good. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Started really mainly in enterprise technology, my professional career uh, in the telecom industry. So uh, GTE Data Systems, I've been started there really as my first job out of college. Uh, initially, my focus was on management information systems programming. I was not a fan of COBOL. I was not a fan of MBS JCL. So I got out of that and then really started going into system administration, system engineering, and system uh, architecture. Right from uh, designing systems and designing solutions. So I went, I spent 20 years at HP. Mm-hmm. Uh, I spent 10 years at Apple and uh, about five and a half years as far at, at Dell Technologies. So always within that Silicon Valley area with those larger organizations, because those are really the ones I feel that have their, their finger on the pulse of what's going on and it kind of resonates out to all the other ancillary mm-hmm. uh, organizations as well. So hardware providers, software providers, uh, solutions, things of that nature. So I've I've kind of stayed within that realm, being the HPs, the Apples, and the Dells, so I can have a pulse on what's going on at the macro level. So not not just kind of a a niche uh, organization, but being able to do hardware, software, networking, Mm -hmm. data protection, things of that nature. So, yeah, it's been a long journey. How old is 20, 30, goodness gracious, 35 plus years? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, some, something like that. Yeah, I've, I've been in the enterprise technology field. Well, that's that's why you're the ideal person to be having this conversation with. Because <laughs> I always do feel like whenever something comes up, it seems like you, uh, you've you either met somebody before or connected with somebody, you know, when different names are thrown out there that, uh, <laughs> yeah, you've got to... Got all the the, the Rolodex is, is is long and wide yeah. for sure. Yeah, the yeah. Rolodex, and I probably dated myself using the term Rolodex. Right, youngsters don't know what in the world that is. Phone book, no. I just want to take a moment to talk about Ecamm Live. This is the live production Mac software that we're using to live stream and record this podcast. In my opinion, it is the best live streaming and recording software on the market today. So what exactly does it do? Well, essentially, it allows you to control the content that you're including in your video, be it a live stream or a recorded video. And you do this by building out different scenes that contain the content that you want to show. This content may be a feed from your camera or indeed multiple cameras, or you may be sharing a screen, which is what I do a lot of in my tutorial style videos that I make for my Take One Tech YouTube channel. You can share the screen from a second computer or maybe even a gaming console if you are a live streaming gamer. And just as we are doing in this podcast, you can also bring in guests using Ecamm Live's built-in interview mode where guests can join from a browser and you can then incorporate their video and audio into your production. Finally, you can add all kinds of additional graphical and animated overlay elements and even movies to really add a level of branded professionalism that would be hard to achieve in any other way. The real magic happens though when you hit that record or go live button because then you are able to seamlessly switch back and forth between all of the scenes that you've created and indeed this is how all of the videos have been created for my Take One Tech YouTube channel and the reason it's called Take One Tech by the way is because all of the videos are made in one take with no edits. I just hit record, make the video and as soon as I hit the end recording button the file is there and ready to be uploaded straight to YouTube. What I love about Ecamm is not just the ease of use that it has when compared to other live streaming software, but also the greater flexibility it gives in terms of layouts and designs that you can create for your shows when compared to some of the hardware streaming solutions. And one thing that makes Ecamm great specifically for podcasts is the fact that it has the ability to record isolated audio tracks. So once we finish recording this podcast, I'll have a separate audio file for me, my guests, and any other audio tracks that have been a part of the recording. That makes the editing and repurposing of the content for the podcast so much more streamlined. 
It does have another little trick up its sleeve though, and that is its virtual camera feature. This allows you to take the video output from Ecamm live straight into communication apps like Zoom, Microsoft Teams, Discord, and so on. This means that rather than just appearing in Zoom meetings with a regular camera feed, you can now show up with all of the amazing production values that Ecamm Live gives you and deliver that straight into your Zoom meeting. And trust me, when you rock up to a Zoom meeting with Ecamm, <laughs> the other participants will be truly amazed. So whether for live streaming, recorded video content, or to level up your Zoom game, I highly recommend you give Ecamm Live a go. You can get a free trial by going to takeonetech.io slash Ecamm. That's E C A double M takeonetech.io slash Ecamm. And of course you can find a link to that in the show notes as well. You will certainly not regret giving it a go. Now let's get back to the show. Perhaps we can talk then about like the, uh, the sort of changes that have happened, obviously with, you know, the, the, the pandemic has driven so many people just, well, everyone really online. Uh, and that has been a big uh, sort of game changer in terms of people having to embrace live streaming. And by the way, when I call this the live streamer backstage podcast, I, I take live streaming to mean um, not just, you know, live streaming on YouTube and the way that uh, certain people in our community may think of it, uh, but also live streaming is, you know, running online workshops on Zoom, online uh, webinars, things like that, anything where you are mm. sort of sort of broadcasting. So uh, there has been, you know, a big sort of explosion of this sort of even pre-pandemic, obviously the, the pandemic accelerated it. But I'm just interested to get your sort of, uh, your sort of thoughts on that and uh, and your thoughts on how you think things are going to change now that things are returning back to norm back to a certain level of normality after the uh, the pandemic you know how how you see things sort of playing out from here with this what 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 is normal <laughs> well, <laughs> were we were we normal before no, no. <laughs> uh, again we can pivot and go in a, on, uh, in a whole different direction I, I like the distinction that you made, though, right, that, that live streaming content creation is not just that one thing that you think about mm -hmm. uh from a, from a YouTube perspective, from a micro content on Instagram or Snapchat or TikTok and things of that nature. But it, it's more of just presenting yourself very similar to how folks have already done from a Zoom side, from a WebEx side, from a whatever, a go to me, from those aspects as well. Just, just mm -hmm. having conversations with constituents and counterparts across the globe or across the, across the room. And the need and the desire to really show up more because again, we've been sitting at home for 700 plus days, unfortunately We're starting to come out of it now. But the fact that I can't just be sitting here with, with my sweats and, and, and a t-shirt and my sandals on, if I'm going to turn on this camera, I still need Alec to know that I'm engaged. That I'm fully prepared for whatever conversation that we had. So I still mm -hmm. need to be productive and I need, still need to show up. The fact that we're live streaming and we're doing it in video, there's so no I'm going to say there's too many tools now, but there's so many tools out there that allow you to really level up that traditional uh, legacy appearance that you have had before, right? We, we no longer will settle for 360p, 480p, lower resolution video, mm -hmm. low quality audio. There is now such an open aspect of being able to have access to higher resolution video higher quality audio and different dynamics within our presentations as well right so zoom has has blossomed into more than just a video conferencing tool right you, you mm -hmm. can you can collaborate you can share documents you can do your presentations you can have breakout rooms you can do all these things that really allow you to have more enriching in-depth conversations and engagements with the folks on the other end of the phone. So if you don't prepare yourself for that, if you don't I guess, at least learn how to use those different aspects of those tools, instead of just clicking on the Zoom look and saying, I'm here for the meeting. Mm -hmm. If you don't raise your awareness and raise your appearance, raise your uh, engagement up for those particular sessions, then you're really doing yourself a disservice, right? And then that can really be that, uh, first impression, unfortunately, that folks will see to say, Oh, you know, what? James really, he was there, but he wasn't there. He we wish he was there a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if, if you bring about that aspect with your audio video lighting quality and things of that nature, when you're having these sessions with folks, that really can, can increase your uh, awareness that, that can increase your subject matter expertise, just again, from mm -hmm. the mindset of the sure. person that you're talking to, right? Mm -hmm. Just just by showing up and looking better and sounding better and just being better and, and, and doing all the things that really can help with the perception yeah, right, exactly. that folks have about you and the other person that's on the line. So I, I think it's, um, 
it's a great time mm -hmm. for us as consumers, us as users of these different pieces of technology, because we have the ability now to very cost effectively, I'm going to say, level up our appearance and level up our gaming when it comes to audio and video conferencing and communications. Mm -hmm. uh, the the point you made there about the way you are perceived it it's it's so true if you're in a meeting and you see someone that's uh there with all of the high quality video and audio uh, they're immediately almost command more respect in the in the virtual room than uh somebody who turns up you know it's, it's almost like someone turning up with a uh you know a smart suit on compared to someone who rolls in with <laughs> you know looking scruffy or something like that it's got that sort of same <laughs> i level. shaved for you i shave i i had a lot of salt <laughs> in the beard <laughs> about uh, three hours ago i tell you what but to uh, know <laughs> uh, but the, the other thing about um uh be, being on zoom is it is because of that it is a then a great sort of leveler really in terms of you know you the sort of swanky offices that people uh people have or had uh, before were kind of you know statements of their the, the status of the company to a certain point whereas uh, when uh, people are not sort of seeing all of that then it really is you know what sort of turns up in the little box that is uh is the, the way you're putting yourself forward mm -hmm. so yeah i totally totally agree with all of that and you mentioned um uh, productivity earlier as well and i wonder like how people are seeing the sort of shift to get back to sort of in-person meetings and in-person events when they've uh, suddenly had this, uh, you know, two years, three years to have this realization that actually it's really quite cost effective to, uh, to have people, you know, working, working remotely and not having to yeah. travel, you know, it's cut down on, uh, you know, business travel expenses and things like that. So I'm, I'm wondering how that's going to sort of pan out. And yeah, I mean, that that's real conversation as well, right? Because you, you think about expense, uh, budgets. You think about you know traveling, traveling, and things of that nature. Now, from an enterprise, I'm, I'm a, with my enterprise hat on. Mm -hmm. from, from that perspective, my day can actually start earlier or maybe in later, and there can be less gaps in it because I don't have to take in the commute time. Sure, I don't have to take in the time that I'm flying to another location or on a train or in, in traffic or something of that nature. I can just roll downstairs into the office, fire mm -hmm. up the cameras, and be ready to go. Now, and there's pros and cons of that, but as long as you yourself are conscious in terms of blocking off your time to be as effective as possible, mm -hmm. right? Don't necessarily, don't necessarily say that you're available from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. without taking the time throughout that day to block off uh, personal growth, uh, lunch, uh, just relaxation, things of that nature, right? Don't just make yourself completely available that entire time. So as long as you're conscious from, from that perspective, but you... Many folks have found themselves more productive now that again some of those outlying aspects are no longer part of the schedule. The, the, the commute, the travel, the getting 100% dressed in a two or three piece suit, things mm -hmm. of that nature, right? So, so that can be a good pro. For for me, it's kind of in between because I will still go do laundry. I'll go cut grass. I, I will still do all these other things in between meetings, mm -hmm. uh, you know, multitask and doing a whole lot of things. So it, it's good for me. It's good for my, for my mind and for my spirit to be able to do these things, take a, take a break from the hard, uh, mental you know, fortitude and things like that of, of designing solutions or, or working on some, something for, for a client or for a partner. But as long as you can consciously understand what your mindset is so, as long as you can consciously take care of yourself first again because now that schedule has been elongated and folks will take advantage i'm not talking listen i'm speaking to the choir here right folks know that uh -huh. folks will take advantage of you if you say you're available from 6 a.m to 7 p.m sure. if you don't block off specific times for you to regroup regroup re-engage re realign refocus whatever the case would be do what you got to do to take care of you that time could be uh, taking advantage of. So just make sure you take care of yourself first and foremost when when it comes to planning out the structure of your day. If And if you're going to be an effective resource for others, make sure you're an effective resource for yourself. I totally, 100% agree with that. It's, it's all too easy to be uh, <laughs> just on all the time and available. So definitely um, yeah. I'm with you all the way on their time blocking there and <laughs> being very conscious of that. So like, you know, when people book calls with me, there's specific hours of the day that it's available. And <laughs> although technically I do tend to work 
uh, quite a few hours a day. <laughs> I'm just have a specific. I know I know what time it is right now for you, young man. <laughs> so I, I will not even say anything about that. I, I know what time it is in, in your neck of the woods. So. <laughs> you were talking before Bless about you, young you, man. <laughs> you're just about to go off to uh, an event though uh, tomorrow, and there is there is mm-hmm. nothing that really compares to doing the the sort of in person events because you get all of the uh, the networking that comes along with that. But I just wonder how um, how you found that. I mean, there's so many people that I've met. Uh, well, you, you being uh, uh, being one of them that I've met through uh, live streaming, and uh, I feel like I've met you. We haven't actually ever stood in the same, well, not even on the same continent <laughs> in, at the same time. So, uh, <laughs> but you still can build, you know, sort of meaningful connections over, uh, you know, through, you know, live streaming in the the sort of virtual space, if you like. And I just wonder what your thoughts are on that in terms of. Um, I'm sure you prefer the in-person events. But how would you feel about the, uh, you know, the abilities to sort of replicate that on online with virtual events? Yeah, that's a, that's a great, great question. Uh, as, as long as you put your, your, your heart and your all effort into it, right, then it does not, regardless of being in, in person, that just means that I'm either, you know, buying you dinner or buying you drinks or whatever the case may be, because we're physically right there. But having the engagement, having the, the connection Mm-hmm. That again, Alec, you, you and I have had. We've we've talked on camera, off camera, text messages, emails, and we've built that relationship. We've built that friendship over time just by being able to collaborate e- with each other. That's inv- invaluable, mm-hmm. right? That, those those are the things that again, I, I hate saying this, but again, if there was any blessing of of COVID, it was the fact that I got to meet people like like you during yep. that particular time because we were uh, aligned to the same type of purpose and the, and the same type of ecosystem. Um, I, I don't ever see, and I made the joke earlier about, you know, what is what is normal and will we ever get back to normal? I, I don't believe that we'll ever get back to a fully uh, all hands on deck, everyone in Las Vegas or everyone in, in New Jersey or New York, you know, everyone at these events as opposed yep. to they're not, them, them not being hybrid, mm-hmm. right? Just having the ability now to actually put on a quality uh, event where you will provide a, a virtual experience as well, mm-hmm. that really resonates with a lot of folks again, because now they've gotten into the the groove, into the, 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 the feeling of being able to do multiple things at the exact same time and do them effectively. I don't have to fly to, I want to, I don't have to fly to Albany, New York for people of video. I can watch the virtual session as well and get the same kind of value out mm-hmm. of the sessions. Yeah, I can still communicate with the folks who I'm going to miss that are physically there. I can talk to them offline on other channels and things of that nature, but I don't feel I'm necessarily missing anything because I am I'm giving the opportunity of having an alternate means of receiving that content and that information. So hybrid, I think, is here to stay. A lot of larger, again, enterprise organizations are building that into their everyday uh, go-to-market strategies. A lot of companies have either closed uh, remote sales offices and remote engineering offices and remote uh, marketing offices, things of that nature. A lot of companies have said, you know what? You don't have to come back to a physical office. All you need is a internet connection and a phone. If you can do your job from the local coffee shop, let's get it done, right? So it, it just makes more sense now to be flexible in terms of what what works for the individual employee. And I think, again, from an enterprise perspective, companies are seeing that. Mm-hmm. And from an entrepreneur perspective, from a solopreneur perspective, from a small business perspective, they're seeing as well that I don't have to, they don't have to try to emulate the big boys out there, right? They, they can actually provide value by still just being true to themselves and, and, and offering different types of solutions. So again, those hyper types of solutions, I don't have to physically book out an entire conference room at the Mandalay Bay. I can use, uh, what is it? I can use Hopin or, or Alter Call or, or some of these, again, virtual mm-hmm. uh, conference platforms, Ecamm, StreamYard, EVMux, whatever, whatever you want to use. You can use these platforms and actually have a very dynamic, engaging, and interesting session as well, hybrid and virtual. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's, uh, that, that's been such a, a great thing that everyone's now got all this infrastructure that they can, they can sort of leverage for those. It, one thing that just sprung to mind, actually, when you were talking about the virtual events and uh, then becoming hybrid events is one of the sort of shining examples of that and how it's really sort of changed their approach is actually with Apple, someone I know that uh, <laughs> a company that we're both uh, very fond of. And their um, big announcements 
be watching them tomorrow. Some things are happening tomorrow. I don't, I'm not sure if there's, you're there's aware a, of that. A little thing going on. Well, yeah, hold yeah. on. <laughs> it's already tomorrow for you. That's it. So, I, I already know the news. I, no, so what no happened? Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it, where you are, it's already tomorrow where you are. Okay, I'll stop. Um, but they, but they, um, they. I mean, they dramatically shifted the way that they did their entire announcements. And now, what they, you know, these really yes. heavily produced, like almost cinematic. Um, announcement things that they're, that they're doing these days are just on a complete another level and that was totally brought about by you know not being able to be on stage in front of a load of people and so i mean yeah. that's that's just such a, a shining example of of what what you can do and now they're just basically playing these to a studio audience so uh it's it's quite phenomenal listen i i was i was in the room for one mm -hmm. one time for one one of those in-person apple announcement sessions when i worked for the company right yeah, it was amazing. Listen, it, it amazing. It, it it was a, a highlight of my uh, professional career at a particular time because again, in the room, feeling all the buzz and and, and yep. all of that. But what they're doing now, right? By by having, like you say, this more of a cinematic approach by having, and us videographers, us content creators can appreciate the fact that you know they got you got Tim Cook up there, and they've you've got all these other executives. They've got this B roll. They've got all of this, this other CGI. They've got all of these aspects of mm -hmm. building out an experience. Yes, yeah. In in this particular announcement, that it's not just Steve Jobs or or Tim Cook or or anyone walking across the stage with with a with a keynote slide deck. There is a complete experience that shows time lapse video that shows all kinds of different types of animation. All all utilizing all the different emotions and feelings for someone as if they were at a movie. Mm -hmm. So you get all of those emotions and that is what, and they know this Apple is master at this. That's what causes you to go and buy that <laughs> new iPhone 14 sure. before it's even available. That's mm -hmm. what causes you to go out and pre-order. Oh, I got to have that, right? I got to have this Denmark studio. Why? I, I don't know. Cause it's, because they told me they I told did. Me. It's the latest thing. <laughs> it's it's better than the one that they had last year. Why? Because they evoked that emotion by by pulling in mm -hmm. all of those aspects of the the lights and the and the uh, the conversations and what you can do with it and what you weren't able to do before and what you can do now. So all of those things are really forward thinking and conscious in terms of how they deliver those sessions. And you you can't get that at a in person event. You're you're only you're only locked into the to the one principal who's on stage. But sure. when you have this cinematic experience from these virtual events that they're now providing, tomorrow's going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's going. I'm going to be locked in. I I'm going to be watching it at the airport before I fly out because I'm just going to be locked in with credit card in hand because whatever they're going <laughs> to announce, I'm going to buy it. They they got me. I'm part of the cult of Mac. I will buy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, speaking of, we, we, we're talking about Mac and, and gear stuff. What, what do you think has been the uh, the sort of, uh, I suppose, the biggest innovation in the past uh, few years to, that's that's really helped live streamers? I mean, either could be software, could be a bit of tech, or what, what do you think's had the, the biggest impact? Or is there, is there one thing that you can nail down? Probably the biggest impact that I believe is higher quality audio creation at home mm -hmm. right uh b being able to really dial in and have superior audio quality not just a microphone right mm -hmm. but but having the, these audio mixers and having these processors and having these devices to where we can really make our voice resonate the way that we want to and may, may not come out the way that it sounds we, we can we can change that mm -hmm. uh, we and then we can ensure that we sound phenomenal when it, when it comes to the content that we're creating. Because at the end of the day, vi video is cool. And, and we, we love video, but that's secondary. Man, if I don't sound right, sure. you're, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna shut it off, right? If, if you can't hear me clearly, and if I don't sound uh, resounding, if I don't sound encouraging, if I don't sound authoritative, things of that nature, right, you're, you're going to get a lackluster experience. So I, I really think that the ability to, to create that audio experience has been one of the bigger things that have hit the content creation ecosystem within the last year and a half or so. All the other stuff is good too, but this Rodecaster Pro Two right here. Come oh, on, I'm right. just looking at this, mine this, right this, now. This, 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 <laughs> right, this 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 thing right here in in the palm of our hand, in the mm -hmm. palm of a of a consumer's hands, as opposed to just being uh, at a at a studio mixer engineer's presence. 
by having this right here and where I can control multiple channels, multiple microphones, sound. Listen, I'm talking again, talking to the choir here. You, you know this thing, right? But I really think that that's been one of the the biggest aspects that, that has helped folks level up their experience of, of delivering quality content. Uh-huh. I, uh, I'm, I'm with you all the way on that. <laughs> you know, you know what I think about the Rodecaster Pro 2. It's um, yeah, it, is, it is a phenomenal bit of tech. I actually find the Rodecaster Pro 2 is kind of on the the cusp of something which is um, it's it's so accessible, um, but there is still a certain level of complexity to it. So I find that you know people who are um, definitely you know asking for consultations and stuff like that. One of the biggest things is the Rodecaster because there's just some little bit that is just they can't quite figure out how to do one particular uh, yeah. particular thing with it. So I think that that is it. I feel like it is at the sort of um, the, the the threshold of, you know, what is, uh, uh, you know, works for consumers, you, uh, you know, using this sort of tech. It's, yeah. uh, you it's, know, I, I would liken it to the iPhone, right? Uh-huh. I would add it to Apple and the iPhone, and I would liken it to Apple taking out the headphone jack. Uh, <laughs> right. Thinking that they know what we know before, thinking that they know what we need before we need it. Yes. Right? Yeah, yeah. The RCP2 mm-hmm. is six months ahead of, I think, what the average everyday consuming yep. or content creator needs. Mm-hmm. The Roadcaster Pro 1, the original OG, is perfect for 99.5% of the folks out here creating content. This new one, though, is just, again, it's just a f- six months ahead of the curve in terms of the capability once we really figure out what uh, we want to do with it as creators mm-hmm. and once road starts rolling out more releases of the firmware i'm, I'm sure just like you i'm on the, uh, you're on a beta version sure. of the software uh-huh. and it's only at 1.07 yep <laughs> version 1.07 once, once they get to a version 1.5 or version 2 once they get to something like that there's just going to be so many capabilities and aspects that we can do with this thing that can't even fathom it at this particular point right yep. so again i think it's just it was given to us before we thought we needed but for those who invested in it hold on to it don't 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 sell it or anything of that nature hold, hold on to what you got and and just be ready for this next wave this next evolution of this capabilities and functionality that they're going to be baking into this particular piece of hardware yeah the, Man, the, the space exciting. it's got to, blo- to to grow is just um it's just yeah. um, amazing i mean it's actually sort of driven some of the things that I'm doing with my discord, that whole thing of having the, you know, live stream, the backstage uh, area for the, uh, the yeah. live streams that is all made possible by the Rodecaster pro two, really, because I have them, you know, all on different channels. So I've got you on one channel, Ecamm, uh, uh, discord on another channel, myself on another one. And being able to do that sort of cross mixing is, uh, yeah, with mix minus on all of them and potentially even have a zoom call going on as well. It's, it's just a phenomenal piece of, tech so <laughs> totally. so so think about that right mm-hmm. so again this is what excites me about technology think about that you have been able to open up in a whole different niche a whole, a whole different lane of yep. your content creation journey by having this particular piece of hardware now your community is able to experience not only this feed but you have a back channel feed going with your community where they're communicating and they're they're commenting and they're saying you know James looks crazy he should have put a hat on oh what, what? <laughs> you know they're, they're talking bad about the old guy uh-huh. but but again it brings out a whole nother level of engagement mm-hmm. with your particular community and allows you to level up your 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 messaging mm-hmm. your authority with your community and your your your, your uh, in content creation evolution things of that nature and it's all within this box and yes yeah, it's, it's a little you got to read the manual. It's not something that you can just yep. fire on and then learn how to do. You actually have to read the manual to, to know how to do some of those things and know which channel to have the uh, device on. But just having that availability and having that ability to do so much more so fast, so quick, relatively easily, is amazing. It's, it's, it's just astounding that we have that capability now that, that it is typically in your ABC, NBC, CBS radio station and and listen man i, I got it here in my little 10 by 10 office right now but uh okay there you go <laughs> and th- that's what i saw sorry I, i'll the- go i'll go on tangents like that right because i'm excited about all this stuff this is all good stuff it's, it's funny i spoke to um jp uh, high tech on the uh, the first episode yes. and we were talking about that and he had a background in uh, you know cinematography and broadcast and so on and it's mm-hmm. it is this thing of like you've just mentioned this is tech that uh, you know only a few years ago would have been uh, you know limited to people in you know 
expensive TV studios and places like that, whereas yeah. now it's just available. And that's kind of what I was alluding to in the the intro as well, really. It's it's the availability of all of this technology, the hardware, the software that has made this all just so accessible to everyone that is causing this. You know, anyone can go out and buy, uh, you know, a relatively inexpensive microphone, a mixer, a camera, and then they can be, uh, you know, creating some amazing things. And perhaps turning True. it around to the software, I mean... For me, Ecamm has obviously been a huge enabler, shall we say, yeah. for what I'm I'm yeah. trying to do. But what's your thoughts on uh, software? I know you're a big Ecamm fan as well, but uh, you know, any other software or things like that that has had the same sort of effect as the the hardware that we've just talked about? For delivering the content and for pushing it out, uh, Ecamm is number one. It, it just is. There, there's no... I'll, I'll get... I'll get hate mail and, and you'll probably get some, <laughs> some statements in the, in the comments or whatever, but there's, there's nothing that compares. There, there just isn't mm -hmm. Mac PC, whatever the case may be. I've, I've offered a lot of my PC users, a Mac, I, I, I will send you a Mac mini so you can make that switch over yeah. to, to Ecamm. Listen, it, it just does everything that you needed to do. And with this next release that we're testing right now, that's in beta, that's hopefully will be out for general availability before the end of the year multi-streaming directly from within the platform come on now it, it, it just there, there's nothing out there that compares to it there are other high quality platforms out there and you know we can talk about them if we want to but again they they just they each serve their purpose each platform serves a particular person and whatever season of the journey that you're in for content creation you may want to go with uh an EVMUX, a StreamYard, a VMix, a Melon, or yada, 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 all, all of those. They all serve Be Live because we know some folks that are they're ambassadors mm -hmm. for them, so shouts out to them. But listen, each one of those platforms serves a purpose. They serve that purpose very well. But when you want to, and I, and I hate to say this, and, and I don't want to be disrespectful, but if you want to come over here and, and hang out with Varsity, <laughs> if, if you want to get off, get off of the JV squad and if, if you want to come over here and, and, and hang with, with, with and do some real complex things in a very simplistic manner, mm -hmm. right? The, the fact that we can move overlays, that we can do scenes, that we can bring in virtual cameras, that we can bring in virtual mics, the fact that we can do so much of, a, of the production from a handful of screens within our environment and it's, and it's all built forward thinking from an Apple perspective, meaning that it's user centric mm -hmm. and it's not meant to be overly complex. It's, it's, it's built with the foreshadowing of being very Apple centric, Apple ecosystem centric. So very simplistic and very easy to do. I don't want to use the word simplistic to think that it's for folks to think that it's dumbed down or leveled down or anything of that nature. It's just very intuitive mm -hmm. in terms of the way that we can actually do things. Now, again, I, I know a lot of the executives and a lot of the, the, the top-notch folks at a lot of those other platforms that I use. Again, I want to restate and reiterate, those platforms do what they do for their particular audience and communities very well. If you want to do something a little more complex, something a little more unique and specific to you as opposed to being kind of locked into a framework or locked into a, into a structure, that's where you go to something like a like a VMix or something like an like an Ecamm. So that it, Ecamm is number one for me from a software perspective. I also use a handful of apps, you know, really just from a product productivity perspective, keeping track of my like run of show and keeping track of all of my show notes and things of like that. But you know, it, not, nothing tops Ecamm for me. Mm -hmm. You mentioned. I got to think of something else. Cause I always, I always say Ecamm. I got to come well, up with something else. It is, it is though. It does sort of shine <laughs> above, you know, all of the, the, it, it the just, other stuff. It just does it? what it does, and uh -huh. it does it so well. I'm, I'm sorry. It just, it does. You, you mentioned about it um, being, being simple, or and then not simple, but it, it, it allows you to achieve really complex things in a very simple way. Um, but there's a lot yeah. of, um, you know, it's my background's in sort of design and engineering and often the most elegant solutions to things, um, have required, you know, a great deal of, you know, work, effort and thought to go into it to actually create that yeah. you know, really simplified version. You know, the simple formulas in mathematics have been, you know, months worth of, uh, uh, you know, derivation and thought has gone into actually whittling something down to its simplest form. And there's something that always I come back to with Ecamm that I think they've got a huge benefit in the fact that um, the 
massive development team behind it, which is basically Ken and Glenn, the, the <laughs> twins. People think that they must have, you know, you know, hundreds of developers working on this, but it is just yeah, the two of them. Yeah. And I think that there's something that actually comes out of having that really uh, sort of, uh, I mean, I, I, I call them one person, they're obviously two, but having that real sort of focused um uh, a view on things where it's not sort of designed by committee. I'm just thinking about some other sort of similar, you know, desktop so software, some open source uh, options that there are on the market. They're very sort of fragmented in terms of um, uh, the actual way that you do things. So they don't yeah. have that same. That's the challenge. So that's the challenge with OBS, right? Yeah. Again, open mm -hmm. source, free, allows it's it's infinite. You're, the possibilities are infinite. Yeah, yeah. But again, there, there there are pros and cons. Just like we were talking about WordPress, right? Again, mm -hmm. being open source with OBS, there are pros and cons to being an open source project. No one essentially owns sure. the direction mm -hmm. of that project, and you just don't know where it's going to go one season to the other. Now, more than likely, it's going to continue to progress and, and move forward and go in the direction that the majority of the community wants to, but. You do have to have some structure. Mm -hmm. you, you do have to have a roadmap. You do have to have kind of a steering committee or something that says, let's take in these feature requests and let's make sure that we work on these types of things. And I just from an open source project perspective, that that you know, that just doesn't make me feel very comfortable mm -hmm. for something that I'm really banking a lot of my business and how I show up to my community and to my clients and to my or for my organization on I, I i gotta have something that yeah i'm paying a subscription for that actually i'm paying to make sure it continues to be evolved and innovated and and progressed on from a from a development perspective that's just me not yep. telling anyone else of what they should do what they can't do that's just how this 52 year old minds works uh -huh. The other thing about OBS as well, of course, is that's cross-platform as well. So with, with it being Mac and PC, mm -hmm. and I often think that uh, when you've got anything that's cross-platform, you're basically getting the, the worst of both worlds <laughs> rather than the best of it because <laughs> you have to come down yeah. to that sort of lowest common denominator in, in both of them. But You do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, you mentioned before about telling people to... You know, I'll, you'll send them a Mac Mini to be able to use uh, Ecamm. Uh, and that's... I've got a Mac Mini sitting right here. Yeah. Right. M1 Mac Mini right here. Whoever wants, I, I put the I put the call and the request out on Facebook and on Twitter. The folks that responded back don't need it. They can afford to buy a Mac Mini. So I, I'm waiting for someone legitimately come up and say I I need I would like to have a Mac Mini and I will bless them with this. I'm just sitting here. Well, there you go. You've you've heard it here now. <laughs> But it's, it's, I mean, I say that on the, uh, the the Zoom course that I do as well, where if, if people really want to sort of level up their appearance on, on Zoom, the best thing they can do is get a Mac to run there, even if they only use it to run their Zoom calls and, and run mm -hmm. Ecamm on it to be able to do those presentations. So, yeah, I think yeah. We, we've, uh, we're, we're both total Ecamm fanboys. <laughs> That's true. Let me, I'm going to drop a couple of other pieces of software because, again, we always lead with Ecamm, but sure, sure. I'm not biased. If, you know, if they were, if they were, you know, a stock tradable company, I'd obviously be invested in, but, uh, <laughs> but, but they're not. Um, in the content creation ecosystem, we've talked a lot about Canva. Mm -hmm. Listen, Canva folks that are listening and watching Canva is the truth. Don't sleep on Canva. Uh, definitely take advantage of, of what that platform provides. There's another platform that has just come out called Simplified, which is close to what Canva offers, but it's just not there yet. It's, 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 it's got a lot of capabilities, a lot of functionality integrated around the uh, the, the the platform. Simplified is another one to look at. It that is that is good. It's an A minus. Canva Pro, not just regular Canva. Go and get that Pro. Go and spend that extra dollars and get Pro. Canva Pro is an A plus. Um, and then I also use a, an app platform called Fellow. Fellow allows me that that's where I keep all of my show notes, all of my agenda. It, it, that integrates with Zoom. That integrate integrates with uh, What's the Cisco one? Is that is that GoToMeeting? Uh, uh, yep. I think so. Right. Mm -hmm. So it integrates with all of that and allows me to collaborate with guests that I may have on a show as well. So I keep a new running run of show in that for each particular stream that I have. And as I have different topics and I, as I want to do some web clippings and bring in articles and things of like that, that's what I have running right below my uh, program screen that shows me, oh, this is Alec Johnson. This, this, and I type in, this is his bio and these are the links, things of that nature. So Fellow is, is another platform and app that I use. I, I like it because it's not just des desktop, it's also a mobile app as well. So I can create and write ideas on my phone 
and they automatically sync to the web as well. Oh, great. I'll have to, have to check that one out. There we sure. go. That's a bit of a bit of balance there out from the, uh, <laughs> the there we go. Side. Right. I, I can't just be 100% Ecamm, you know, I'm not, <laughs> you know, I got pillows and everything. All, oh my gosh. I got, what, what else do I got? All, all of my, all of my mugs are Ecamm right. mugs. It seems as well. <laughs> all, all of my mugs too. Pretty yeah, much, yeah. you know, golly. <laughs> Well, let's have a little talk then about some uh, some hardware as well, because uh, yeah, I always like to yeah. get a, a little look behind the scenes, and we've talked about software and you know, hardware solutions, but I do always like to uh, to have a little look at what's going on because uh, we can always see the, uh, the the lovely backdrops that people have got, but uh, we rarely see the actual the tech that they're using to make everything actually <laughs> run perfectly. So, uh, so I'd love to have a little look at that. I can bring up a, uh, a an image of that, or if you want to share your screen, we can do it that way. But we got this. I just have we to show this. Shot. Either way, I tell you what. Let let me let me do that, uh, so folks can see behind. Oh, did I pick up all my socks and everything? Yeah, I, I did pick up all of my socks, and they're they're not on the on the floor. <laughs> so that is a uh, Insta three hundred and sixty picture I took of the studio a few nights ago. Uh, the one what did Alec put up just oh, now? Let me just put that. Back. Uh, and it's mm-hmm. yeah, and essentially I am in a command center here. Uh, I, I can, um, <laughs> I probably can compete with the local, uh, PBS station in terms of some of the, the infrastructure that I do have in this room, but listen, it, it, it all serves a purpose as well, right? First thing you see right now inside of me is this Dyson that's keeping the air blowing in here because it gets warm in here. But, uh, my main system is the Apple Mac studio that is running, uh, all of the live streaming activity that's running ecam that's running just all of the essentials that i need from from that perspective so that's my primary driver uh from a monitor what i'm looking at perspective those i've got a so i've got, I've got two 35 inch lg monitors i'm looking the one you see in front of you is an lg then i've got another one off to the side uh, the lg is the uh the 4k monitor which is my primary display to the side of that i have I have the Monty Weaver is, is how I call it. It's, <laughs> it's, the, it's the Samsung 49-inch monitor. So, yeah, I, I call it the Monty Weaver because I saw it on his stream, and I said, I just got to have that. I don't. Do I need it? Maybe. I don't know. But I, I got it. And I had 49 inches worth of goodness. And that's right now it's trailing the show. It's watching it on the different platforms that we're streaming. So I've got a total of one, two, three monitors that are actually doing something active on any particular stream. I've got another system, uh, another monitor that's connected to that Mac mini that I'm giving away to someone that really is just here for a screen saver. And, and I'll, I'll show, I'll bring my phone up and show it to you in a minute. But uh, from what you can see here, microphone, Shure SM7B, the Michael Jackson mon, uh, microphone, right? The one you recorded Thriller with. So I can't go wrong with that. Got that going, got my iPad for primarily when I'm doing my Amazon live streams because you have to have an iOS device when you're doing Amazon live content. That's what that is. Uh, My stream deck, which is, again, a marvel of technology innovation. It is more than hotkeys. It is more than a switcher. It is an amazing piece of productivity gear that everyone should have in their studio, in their office. So I've got the Elgato stream deck controlling all of the aspects. Below the desk, I've got the Elgato foot pedal as well, which I do use. Um, let's see. You can't see it, but the Rodecaster Pro, there we go. The Rodecaster Pro 2 right there, controlling all of the audio pieces. From a video perspective, my cameras, I'm all Sony. So I've got the Sony a7 IV full frame as my primary driver with the 20 millimeter prime lens that's given... That, that goodness that, that you're seeing on the stream right now. Hopefully it's goodness, right? Um, hopefully that's a, that's a good picture, but I've got that. An alternate view, an alternate angle, I've got the Sony ZV-E10 with a, it's got the 16 millimeter on there. And that's, so that's got the Sigma 16 on that. And then this is my, I'm calling this my Tom Buck view. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is a Sony ZV-1 on a Ronin slider. And that is, again, providing just a different view, different aspect in terms of the content uh, availability that I'm providing to folks. You see the 50-inch screen behind me that I use really as a marketing piece. So I have my uh, branding on that. Uh, what else? What else is, is good to talk about? 
I've got some other infrastructure pieces here, right? I got my OWC uh, dr external drive that, that houses all of my uh, content. So when I record, I send all of that data. All of the audio goes to the, the micro SD card in the back of the uh, Rodecaster Pro. And then when I'm recording Ecamm, all of the data goes to my OWC uh, external drive. Uh, lighting. Lighting is important. I've standardized on Godox. I've got two Godox ES45 uh, flat panels in front of me. So I've got, and, and they're both pointed kind of at an angle. So they're bouncing off the wall, kind of resonating light off the wall. And then behind me, you can see I've got two of the, what are those, the TL60, Godox TL60 tubes. I've got two behind me. I thought I had four. Where's the other two? Oh, yeah. There's, <laughs> I've got, <laughs> I, I, I don't know where they are, but yeah, I've got two others as well. Oh, there you are. Right, right there. There's, there's one right there. So mm -hmm. I've got two directly in the back and then two other places within the studio as well, providing additional practical lighting. And as you can see, some additional practical lighting back behind me as well. So, um, yeah, there, you know, there it is. And then my, my flare, I'm not sure. I forgot what movie that came off of, the, the term flare. But uh, I've got my different pieces behind me, my on-air sign, mm -hmm. my, my grid studio. So I've got the original iPhone oh, and I've right, got right. the iPhone five when they switched to the candy bar. Uh -huh. Very nice. So I've got, I've got those framed and mounted as well here in the studio just to provide some additional context and color. And yes, the Ecamm pillow. Got to have the Ecamm pillow. <laughs> it's such a fantastic. There's, there's more, but you know, those are, those are the main pieces, right? There, there's, there's more. I mean, I've, I've got my other boom arm and I've got another microphone. I've got the Lewitt LCT 440 for when I don't want to have a microphone in the shot. And I've got honestly another iPhone mounted up there from when I do my top down shots, when I'm doing unboxings things and things of that nature. So. The LCT uh, 440 then. So is that, um, do you not yeah. need to have that in, in as close a proximity then? I, w I would always imagine that you would have still need to be uh, fairly close, but can you, you have that out of the shots then? Can you or? Uh, yeah, it's so it's a condenser mic as opposed to a dynamic as the SM7B. So right. it can be a little bit further. And I, I just oh, I raise the gain up a little bit when I do that. So yeah, right, right. It's a lovely looking microphone that one is. <laughs> it, <laughs> it is. It's, it is. It's, yeah, it's one of my favorites in terms of just the the overall sort of design of it. It just looks uh, looks fantastic. And in terms of uh, the where you're at with your studio, then I mean, this is a bit of a foolish question, but. Is it done yet? <laughs> Have you got plans for further upgrades? I mean, you know, it's, it's never done, is it? But it's <laughs> I am, I am comfortable with where it is. Right. You know, I, I am, I'm okay to be honest with you. There, there is one of our colleagues in, in the content creation world, and I won't mention his name, but because I don't want to talk bad about him, but he's got me thinking about another microphone. Mm -hmm. He's got me thinking about a Neumann. Right. The Neumann microphone that I want, and my, I'm glad my wife isn't here. I hope she, I know she's going to be watching. The, you know, the Neumann microphone I want is two thousand dollars. Now, do I need that? I don't know if I need that, but I sure. I, I tell you what, <laughs> <laughs> Bur birthday is coming up here in in a few weeks. That I may have a have a Neumann microphone replacing this SM. I, I don't know, but yeah, for the most part, the the studio is done. I think I I may. Um, move off of some of these large displays to be honest with you and go with more of a consolidated approach so instead right. of this large 49 and these two large 35s i may actually go down to something more more ergonomic to whereas i can easily look at like comments on one screen oh, yeah. and and all of the infrastructure for ecamm on another as opposed to having to scan my eyes across mm -hmm. all of the time so so that that may be the next evolution of the studio but no i'm, I'm okay for right now it's, it's okay looking pretty right close to perfect to me <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> uh -huh. Uh, one of the things that um, I ask about when um, you know when you when you came on was uh, what's your favorite bit of tech, and uh, you mentioned the Lumetric, and it's something that uh, yes. I've, I've seen that few few people have those, but I've, <laughs> and I know that you can uh, you can put all sorts of information, you know, uh, YouTube subscribers, weather, and all that kind of stuff. But um, what is it that uh, that makes that your favorite bit of tech, and um, what what? Okay, what is, so what is your view? I'm I've got too much I've got too much bokeh running on my camera right now, yeah, but back there can you oh geez get out of the way james so there there it is right there right and again it's just a desktop smartphone oh speaking of clocks did, 
I've got, did you see in the picture your clock? I told you I was going to buy your oh, clock. Oh, did you? The oh, big right, face right, clock. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah put, put, put my picture back up. Put, 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 put that photo up. I've got your big face clock here. Uh, Alec has to just tell me one time to, to buy something, and, I'm, and then I'm going to buy it. <laughs> yeah, I've got the gear. Uh, no, but the, the Lemetric, again, it it has, where, where is it at? Oops. There. Uh, there it is right there, un underneath the um, the large monitor. Yep, yep. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so so the Lumetric is smart clock, Wi-Fi connected, ties into my music as well. So my Apple, my Spotify, my Amazon. So I can either play music from that, uh, but it also ties into my social presences. So as someone likes something on Facebook, on the page, on the brand page, or the business page, or the group, or if someone follows me on Twitter, someone becomes a subscriber on the YouTube channel. Uh, I think I've got, I don't know why, I've got Twitch on there too, but I'm going to take that off. But in all those various social platforms, as people engage and either like or even dislike, it'll actually make an audible sound. Uh -huh. So I, I, I like that, just that um, that dopamine hit, to be honest with you, fr right, from so that. Yeah. And, and just having it there, I'm going for a goal and target of, of reaching 10,000 followers on, on Twitter before the end of this calendar year. And every time I, I see that thing tick up one, two, three, four, five, however many people I say, I'm getting closer to that, to that number. So I, I just love that just for, again, gamification of the aspect and saying, you know what, there yeah. are that many people that like what you're doing, that are bought, buying into the community that want to continue to hear what you're talking about and are either sharing that with, with their constituents. So that's, that's kind of that extra, caffeine in the cup sometimes just to hear that thing tick off and say yep five more people subscribe to the channel or, or two more people like the post that you put out on the website so yeah i should definitely say then at this point you can find uh james's <laughs> twitter handle in the uh, in the description as well uh, and in the show notes <laughs> we've got a, we've got a goal to achieve here folks <laughs> there it is right uh -huh. Uh, one of the other things that I always ask end, as well. End of the calendar year, 10,000. I'll, I'll throw what, what, a party, what, what, and, and it's going to be at Alex's house. What, oh. what, are, what are you up to now? How far, how far have I, we got to go? I think I'm at uh, like 6,700. Ah, right, right. Like, we're like, like close to 67. So, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm doing the math, and I, I got a couple of nice shows and streams and, and events coming up within the next couple of months. So, who just might get there. Just might get there. <laughs> Anyone listening or watching, yeah. hit the pause button and uh, go and do what you've got to do. <laughs> <laughs> and then come back. That's it. Right? Yeah. Then, yeah. then come back. Don't, yeah, don't, yeah. don't, don't, don't forget it. <laughs> yeah. uh, what, one of the Indeed. other things that I asked for as well is um, is a book recommendation because I'm a big reader. I always like to, uh, uh, you know, learn from uh, what other people are, 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 are learning from as well. And the book you mentioned, um, uh, The Give First Economy. So I uh, I listened to that uh, yesterday and uh, I, I loved it as well. But I'd love to hear your take on, um, uh, on why that's had an impact on you and, and, and how, you know, from your content creation and point of view, I suppose, in any, yeah. any aspect of life, really, I suppose. Yeah, you know, uh, Kirby Hasselman, the, the author uh, of the book, The Give First Economy, really just solidified and resonate what a lot of us in the content creation ecosystem and environment are, are already talking about. Right, the fact that it's bigger than the individual, uh, it's bigger than me, it's bigger than just what I want. It's all about community, and it's all about making sure that we show up every single time we turn these lights on, we press record. Every time that we show up, it's for the community that we're we're bringing value, that we're bringing something of usefulness, and we're really, from my perspective as well, wanting to rise above the noise. Right, wanting wanting to bring something that 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 matters to to the folks that are giving us their most precious commodity, their time. And so the book really talks about doing business the right way by being locked in and, and attentive to what your consumers, your constituents, your, your sphere of influence has to say, right? You, you don't always have to do what they have to say, but you have to listen, right? You, you can't be so close-minded to where as you, you, you can't get out of your own way where, again, where you think it's all about you when you're not really serving yourself, you're really serving those around you and your service, you're serving the community. So this book really, it was a, it was a pretty, pretty straightforward read, a lot of common sense uh, statements that were made in it, but you know, it really again made you, made me stop and pause and say, you know what? That's right. These are the things that matter. 
making sure that every single time I write a blog post, every single time I, I put out a piece of micro content, every single time I do a stream that it's serving a purpose of the ones who are either paying me in time or paying me from a financial perspective to bring content to them. So it, it um, yeah, I, I mean, it's on Kindle, it's on audiobook. I think it's a uh, hardback and paperback as well. I, I got mine off of audible cause I have a, a subscription to audible, but, but yeah, it just, it just hit all of the points that I've been saying. I, and a lot of folks around me again, within this ecosystem have been saying that stay locked in on the community, make sure you're doing the best for them in the actions and, and you will succeed. Whatever your measure and whatever your mark of, su of success is, just stay, stay focused on, on doing the best that you can for your community. You mentioned uh, something there about it being, uh, uh, you know, a lot of stuff in there is, is common sense. But one of the uh, things I actually wrote this down <laughs> from the, the book was the greatest distance in the world is the distance between I know and I do. So there's lots of things that we know that we should be doing, um, <laughs> that's a good but one, we're not it? actually yes. doing it. And it thought that is uh, that's really powerful, that is, because <laughs> yeah. uh, it, there is so many of these things that we read and we think, well, I kind of know that. That's that's obvious, but it's like, oh, are we actually doing it? So mm -hmm. yeah, it's always good to have these uh, these reminders. So I love I love that. <laughs> yes. It, it, and it just it, it's one of those reads like um, that you continue to read uh, every single time and you'll, you'll pick up a different nugget each in the, each time. I, I've read it like, I think three times, to be honest with you. Well, I, I have the audio book, so I've listened to it at least three times, but each time I'll pick up on something just a little bit extra and say, yep. okay, this is a good measure. This is a good marker to continue to keep doing the right thing mm -hmm. the right way to make sure that I'm serving the community. So yeah, it's great, uh, great book. And um, perhaps uh, just as we're uh, nearly at the top of the hour, uh, have you got sort of one final bit of advice that you would like to uh, uh, sort of impart to uh, somebody who's maybe starting out in live streaming? I mean, this is a, uh, uh, you know, a podcast for live streamers by live streamers, but is there sort of one mm. thing that you think could have really sort of advanced your uh, progress if you'd known about it sooner, perhaps? Yeah, uh, don't try to do what someone who's been doing it for longer than you is doing day one, <laughs> right, right there, right. Do go at your own pace, appreciate and understand the process and the journey, right? Start with what you have. Don't try to get out there and don't try to get this SM70. Don't try to get this Roadcaster Pro 2. Don't try to get this A74 day one. Listen, unless you can financially afford it, unless you want to get it, and unless you can take the time, as I said before, and read the manual so you can understand how to take advantage of the, the tools and the capabilities of what you have. But everyone's walking around with one of these, right? Here's a $1,000 4K 60 resolution camera in your pocket right now. Everyone's got one of these. And you may not have an iPhone, but again, you got, you got, a, you got a modern day smartphone that, that, can do, that can shoot in 4K resolution. Start there. So if I had... And I say this all the time as well now, you can get out of my own way. If I, if I could have gotten out of my own way and not slowed my progress to the point where I thought that so much had to be in place before I could really start, I would have started much earlier. And for folks who haven't started, who are waiting till uh, they get the logo, they get the branding colors, they get the hardware infrastructure, they get the pitch down, they get the niche down, right? Some of those things you need to have obviously up front because you, you want to tell your story and you want it to resonate with a particular community, but don't worry about all of that ancillary stuff. The content is what matters the most. You talk, you bring, you bring quality content, the community will come and then you can bring on all of this, this, these other, as I'm calling ancillary pieces to it as well. So get out of your own way. Don't pause, don't hesitate, just go out there and do because if you got a, you've got a story and the world is waiting for you to tell that story. Fant yeah. Fantastic advice. Um, I've just noticed we've got a, a question come in on Amazon. So before we wrap up, I do want to just uh, address that. Somebody, uh, Richard from San Diego is asking, uh, is there a difference? Is, is there a different set of rules for doing business uh, with millennials versus boomers? And actually, it sort of ties in with uh, uh, the, the sort of live streaming aspect of things a little bit. I know this is more of a business question, but just in general, there is a sort of uh, uh, a different way of consuming content as well, I would say, at these yep. uh, different levels. I did a bit of a, uh, I'm always looking at the analytics of my uh, my <laughs> my videos. 
and I've as got, you should. and I, I'm looking yeah. at um, the the sort of age groups that I've got, and there is a definite spike in um, the sort of for me it's the the sort of mid 30s to mid 40s is the 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 highest number of people that are watching the content that I've got on YouTube. But actually, if you um, if you just rank it by the percentage of my videos that they're watching. Um, it's it's a direct line going from the youngest to the oldest. The uh, the older people watch more of a given vid video, watch a higher percentage of a specific video. Yeah. So they're actually watching it all the way through. Whereas the uh, uh, the younger they are, the more you know, the, the sooner they're switching off and going on to the next thing because they need yeah. that sort of quick <laughs> quick hit sort of thing. Right. So it's that quick dopamine hit, right? Ninety seconds. Right? And what what is is TikTok? No, not TikTok, but Instagram Reels are ninety seconds. I, be I believe at this yeah. particular point. So yeah. Uh -huh. But I just wonder if you've got any, uh, just since we've uh, we've had the, the the question, have you got any insight on that in terms of uh, you know different di different demographics and how you noticed anything uh, different with uh, you know the people that you you're you're serving? Yeah, very similar, right? In, in terms of just the the uh, attrition and in terms of the uh, retention of the content, I, I get more engagement from a sharing and collaboration perspective from the younger generation as opposed to the older. Uh, generation, but, but correct, right? I've got my dynamic and, and my numbers show I've, I've got a higher percentage of males watching mm -hmm. as opposed to to females, and I'm really trying to level that out. So trying trying to be cognizant and, and bring on bring about more diversity from that perspective for, from my audience. But I, I do also see that that older folks, more seasoned folks, I'm going to call them older folks. Oh my goodness, you know the, the boomers and <laughs> those folks. Uh, do tend to watch longer form content and they mm -hmm. will sit there and actually watch an hour long live stream as opposed to, again, the need it now social media uh, environment and, and, and age bracket where they're swiping every 90 seconds or every three minutes because they, they need to move on to that next thing. So that that's where, again, we're building content for both mm -hmm. that's why we're we're on tiktok that's why we're on snapchat and that's why we're making youtube shorts because again you can create that quick hit mm -hmm. that really uh capsulates all uh, as much of the information as you can in that quick shot and then folks can either choose to watch more of that by going back to the channel or, or doing whatever uh but again they get a, kind of a core piece of that information my advice is to it depends if you're trying to serve both audiences that you then you do you, you have to create both of those types of content you do have to do the longer form you do have to do some of the medium form and you do and you do have to do that micro content with all the hashtags with all the relevant topics and all of that so you can garner the audience of those uh that younger audience who they will see it the younger audience tends to actually do more of the sharing Right, because they'll, they'll tell someone, oh, did you see what Alec was talking about the other day? Check this out, too. So so they'll see it. If they can see within that 30 seconds, that 60 seconds that they like it, they'll tell their friends about it. But again, the the more seasoned demographic will just watch the entire bit. They'll do the like on Facebook or something of that nature. But it, it, it may not necessarily grow from from that particular audience. But but again, you, you want to have a smattering of each of those demographics within your community so you can make sure that you're touching and reaching and having that dialogue with everyone. But because uh, they all matter, right? They all matter because there could be that time, maybe in a face-to-face -face conversation or a session where that old, older person, those more seasoned folks are, are talking to their peers and they say, oh, I was watching Alex's show the other day and it was so cool. Uh, you should go check it out. That's the engagement as opposed to that instant, just a, an airdrop or an iMessage or something mm -hmm. that, that the younger folks would do. Yeah, great to. So long answer short, <laughs> yes. <laughs> make content for make content for everyone that's in your community, uh -huh. regardless of the age and, and demographic, because uh, you you never know who is going to share, engage, and and resonate with a particular mm -hmm. message, even a snippet of that information. They, they they may share that with their with their counterparts. Yeah, well, so. you, you know that I'll be making a, a short, a TikTok and a, a reel just out of what you've just said as well. So this it. is this is certainly all going to be uh, repurposed. So, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'm going to be all over the Internet, folks. You know, uh -huh. thanks, thanks to Alec Johnson. I'm going to be all over the Internet. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, it's trouble. Thanks so much, James, for coming. I just want to be conscious of uh, of your time that we're uh, we're we've overrun slightly past the uh, top of the hour. But uh, thanks so much for uh, for coming on and sharing all of your uh, your insights. 
where is the uh, the best place that uh, people can go and follow you? Obviously, uh, Twitter, first and foremost. Let's go and get, get that get Twitter that. following. Gotta get that. <laughs> but where else would you like to uh, sort of direct people to come and connect with you? Let's see. I was, try- I was trying to see if the number flipped over, but I, I didn't hear it. I saw, I saw it. That was just a time. Uh, everything really lives at hicksnewmedia.com. That is the, the hub for everything that has links to membership, that has links to podcasts. Uh, links to the YouTube site, links to my newsletter, links to being able to book me for any conversations and things of that nature. Uh, that right there is where the hub for all of my content lives and resides. So yeah, you can, you can definitely reach me there. Great stuff. Well, yeah, a little, little collaboration testimonials. Oh my goodness, that's some good I stuff. Noticed, there. I noticed. I yeah. noticed, Mr. Keith Pelzer. Always nice to see uh, Keith's face <laughs> just there up on the screen. Well, well scroll, <laughs> scroll up. Look, look at the one that's right next to next one, one of, uh, right next to Keith too. So go, go back. He, when he recorded it, he had a, a pause screen in it. But go back and look at that that first one there. Oh yeah, Mr. Mr. Buck, oh, the master himself. <laughs> 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 Everyone loves Tom. <laughs> Well, thanks so much for uh, for coming on. And obviously, all of the uh, the links to everywhere you can find uh, James, you'll find them in the description and in the uh, show notes for those listening to the podcast as well. It's been uh, great chatting to you, as always, James. It's uh, uh, great to be on the uh, the other side of the, the conversation, as it were. I've been uh, very honored to have been <laughs> on your show a couple of times. So uh, yeah, great to, great to speak to you and, uh, and let you be the, the focus for a change. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. This, this is amazing. I, I like what you, I like the evolution of what you're, you're creating, right? You, you are really doing, you're doing it the right way, right? You, you, you have created masterclasses, you have created sessions, you have created streams, you, you're, and you're, and you're, you're going about it the way that should be copied. It, it really it really should be copied because what, what you're doing, you're, you're touching everyone as necessary, when necessary, where necessary, right? So again, you're, you're, you're on YouTube, you're on LinkedIn, you're on Amazon Live with the right content for those particular platforms. So I wanted to give you those flowers and say kudos to you, man, for, for what you're doing as well. This, it's, it's been fun to watch the Alec Johnson, the, the Take One Tech um, evolution in terms of content creation, content delivery, and just really community building as well so oh well thank you thank you very much and uh, you know i'm i'm only copying other people as well so <laughs> we're all sort of learning and taking bits from uh, from other people yes. aren't we? so I, I really appreciate you saying that though james you've always been uh, a supporter and a champion of what i'm doing so uh yeah you know i've got a, a great deal of uh, gratitude and respect to you for all of that so thank you, sir thanks uh, once again uh so thanks everyone for watching on the live stream you can catch us live every tuesday at uh, 7 p.m eastern standard time uh, in the next episode i'll be joined by keely dunn and we'll be talking uh, as we were just talking about community we'll be talking about building and serving a community on discord if you've uh, never heard of discord before then uh, you're in for a treat and if you have heard of discord but think it's not for you then uh, you'll definitely want to hear what keely has to say on that I personally resisted Discord for months, uh, but it turns out that I was wrong and hashtag Keely was right. <laughs> uh, setting, the take a, uh, setting up the Take One Tech community on Discord was the best thing that I've done since starting Take One Tech. And I now feel that I have a much deeper connection with my audience. Uh, and this is fed directly back into my content. And it's all down to, as I say, setting up this community. And Keely has been so instrumental in uh, showing me the light in that respect. So it's sure to be another insightful conversation as always. Uh, so you definitely want to uh, check that out. Uh, in the meantime, have a great week ahead uh, and we will see you all very soon. <laughs> <laughs>